While working in Power BI, you're going to be facing situations where you would want to rank. Rank your products, rank your customers. In this video, I'm going to show you two methods of ranking. One is going to be static ranking using Power Query, of course, and the other one is going to be dynamic ranking using some DAX functions. All right, no further ado, I'm excited. Are you? Let's start. All right, fellas, let's start first with static ranking. Now, what do I mean by static ranking? Static or fixed ranking means rank that is calculated in Power Query using Power Query formulas and then pushed off to Power BI. Now that rank is not going to change as per the filter context in Power BI. Obviously, if you would want to have something calculated, pre-calculated, and you don't really want to change that in Power BI, it's a good idea to pre-calculate that so that the speed of the model increases and you're just pushing the data off to the visuals. Let's just start with how that happens. Take a look at this little data that I'm working here with. Uh, I have a year, I have the name of the product, and I have some ad expense. This is some mocked up data, and I would like to rank all the expenses, all the products, by the order of the ad expense. That means the most expensive uh, ad expense product should rank one, and then rank two, rank three, so on and so forth, across two years of data. So we have first 2011 data right up till here, and then 2012 data right up till here. Now, before I start to write formulas, let's just understand the base formula as to how does that formula work, and then we will do some more sophisticated work in Power Query. All right, so I'm gonna create a new step right here in the query and I'm gonna to start to write the formula. The formula that I'm gonna use is going to be table dot add rank column, and I'm gonna start the bracket. The first part of this function is going to be a table. That means which table are you trying to use for the ranking? So I'm trying to use this table, which is change type. Of course, that's the previous step, which is right here. All right, then after that, it says that what would you like to call the column in which you're going to supply the rankings? So I'm just gonna call this as rank for that matter, doesn't matter. And then it says, hey, what is your comparison criteria? Now in comparison criteria, generally you would wanna use the column in which you're trying to sort the ranks by. So take a look at this previous step. I would like to calculate the rank as per the ad expense column. So that's what I'm gonna provide right here. In the curly braces, of course, I'm gonna write the name of the column which is going to be add expense, just as the way it was written. And then what order of ranking do I want? I want a, this in the ascending or descending order actually. So I am just going to say order dot descending. Now there is one more additional parameter in this function, which is what kind of ranking do you want? Do you want dense ranking? What happens in the case of ties and things like that? So if I put another comma, it says that you have a few more options to provide if you provide them in a record. Let's just take a look. So I will start to create a record and in the record, I will define what is the kind of ranking that I want and which is going to be prefixed by a standard column name called rank kind. And then I can say rank uh, kind dot. And as soon as I say that, it's going to give me four options. Rank kind, con rank, rank kind dot competition, rank kind dense, uh, ordinal and type. In this scenario, I'm gonna use dense because in case there are any dies, I want the next ranking to start with the next number, not really skip the number. So if you have two, let's just take a look. I don't really wanna speak, you wanna take a look at it. So at the moment, if you take a look at a few numbers right here, let's just take a look. Uh, where are those numbers? Take a look, we have 1200 repeated two times, and of course the ranking for that is eight, which is the same rank, and the next number starts with nine, and that's the meaning of the dense ranking right here. The problem as of now is that all of these ranks have been calculated in the model, and we have all the ranks up until the 20th. It's not really differentiating by the year, and I would want it to differentiate by the year. That means the set products get ranked for 2011, and the next set of products get ranked for 2012. Although we have the formula, I'm gonna copy the formula, and I'm gonna use the formula while we are creating grouping in the table. So I will copy the formula, delete the step, and at the moment create grouping. So in the transform tab, I'll create group by, and I'm gonna say, hey, I'd like to group it by the year, and that's pretty much it. And then I am going to, uh, let's just say that create a column called all operations as all rows, and click on okay, and that's the table that I get. Now, for all of these products, which I can peek into right here, I would like to be able to create a rank right here. That's what I would like to do. And all the 
uh, products in the 2012, I again want to create a rank column right here. That means I'm just trying to work with nested tables and then create a column in the nested table, the formula that we just use. How do we solve this? Let's just take a look. All right, so if you take a look at the formula, which is table.group function, in the table.group function, the first part is nothing but the name of the table that we're trying to group. Year is the column that we have used for the grouping. And then all is the column that we have created. Each underscore right here gives us this particular table. And then there are data types right here. So what I'm going to do is this underscore, which actually delivers me a table right here in this underscore, I'm trying to create one more column. So I'm going to get rid of all of this part right here. And I am just going to paste my formula that I just copied a while ago. Of course, delete that is equals to sign. And if you remember, in this table dot add rank column, we use the change type, which was the previous step. This time we have to use the underlying table, which is this particular table. And that table is denoted by the underscore. So I'm just going to change that change type and use the underscore instead. And hopefully that should work. Of course, I have to close the curly braces right here. One, two, and then close the main brackets right here. Hopefully that should work. Now, if you peek, peek into the table, you're going to see that we do have a rank column created, which is the rank of all the products in that particular year by the ad expense. And of course, I would just like to call this as fixed rank instead, and that is good to go. And this data, of course, can now be used. Now, at the moment, these are packed tables or nested tables. I would want to expand these tables. So what I can do is very, very simple. I can just create one more step. There are all the columns which are present right here. These are all the columns that I need. And I can just say, hey, there are two tables. Just combine the data of the two tables, which has now one extra column. So the tables are in there in the all column. Uh, and I'm going to use the table.combine function, start the bracket and close the bracket in the end. And all the data of those tables get combined. And that is beautiful. All right, guys, let's just start with part two of the video, which is where I'm going to show you how do you calculate a dynamic rank? Take a look at the data model that I'm working with. It's ridiculously simple. So we have, of course, the products table, the calendar table, two dimension tables connected with my fact sales table. And on the visual tab right here, I have built a very simple pivot table, which is where I have the year coming off my calendar table, products name coming off my products table and total sales measure that is calculated. Now, for every single year, I would want to calculate that what rank was the product given the sales. So here are the sales of the products. And of course, I can sort the sales in the descending order. And I would like to take a look at products ranked by sales. How do I do that? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a measure. And of course, once I'm creating the measure, the measure has to be dynamic enough. That means if I apply a filter, take a look at a regional sales or any particular quarter sales, the ranks need to change. That's my aim. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and say that I would like to create a new measure. Let's just give this measure a name called product rank. And I am going to start using the function called the rank X function. Now, in the rank X function, it says that, hey, please give me a table that you're trying to use for a ranking. That means which table each row should I go through? I'm going to say, hey, why don't you go through each row of the products table? And then it says, hey, what is the expression? That means what calculation would you like to use for the ranking? Of course, I have already built the calculation, which is nothing but my total sales calculation. Use that. And then it says, hey, uh, do you have a value that you'd like to provide in between, which is this? I do not have any external value that I'd like to insert. I can skip that for now. And then it says, what is the order that you would want? So I would want the ranks to be in the descending order. And then in the end, I would want the ties to be in the dense order. That means the rank type is going to be dense, just as the way that we did it in Power Query just a while ago. Press enter. And if you drag this particular rank to the pivot table, let's just take a look at what do we get. We get rank one for all the products. Why is that? Now, this is a very, very common mistake while you're doing ranking calculations is because if you think about it, we went inside every single row of the products table. And if you think about any particular filter context, so let's just say this particular data or this particular data point, which is startup template finance. This is a filter context. This is going to filter the table to just one single product. And if you think about one single product and the rank for that product, obviously that product is going to rank one because that is the only product present as per the filter context. Now we would want to consider all the products and not just one single product. So what I can do is I can use a function and I can say something like remove the filter from the products and the product name right here, which is the product column right here. And once you have removed the filter from the product and you're taking a look at all the products, 
only then calculate the rank as per the total sales. Now, if you press enter, hopefully you should start to see ranks calculated. And th these ranks are, by the way, dynamic. That means should you want to add any filter? So let's just say that I go to my sales and I apply a channel filter right here, convert that to a filter. And if I just maybe take a look at organic products or promotional products, the ranks are obviously going to change because as of now, this data is sorted, the table is sorted. If I don't sort the data and sort it by the year instead, you're going to see that the ranks do definitely change. So organic, uh, affiliate, so on and so forth, and the ranks do get changed. All right, that's been it. A little tutorial on calculating fixed and dynamic rankings in Power BI. Let me know what you think about this. And in case you have faced any problems with these calculations in the past, please do drop in a comment. I'll be glad to reply. Before you go, I'd like to give a big shout out about my DAX and my Power Query training courses. These are the exact type of problems that we try to solve. Much beyond this, we try to build up fundamentals first and then try to solve harder, more difficult problems, even of your own data, so that you become more confident in solving problems of your own in Power BI. If you're interested, the link is in the description. I'd be happy to welcome you in the course. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching and I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. Bye now.